20,000 flights fly across all the globe, carrying hundreds of thousands of people from place A to place B. So flights are popular to say the least, and flying is by far one of the safest means of travel. Going just by numbers, in 2018, there have been 15 fatal air island accidents, which resulted in 556 deaths, compared to average of 1.2 million deaths in car accidents every year. But 556 is still not equal to zero, and governments all over the world have been making some stringent regulations to enhance air safety, such as crushable aluminum under seats, multiple seat checkups before every flight, and so on. But if something is about to go wrong, it will, you know, the Murphy's Law. So wouldn't it be better to give every single passenger their own parachute so they can just jump out when things go wrong? Then why don't commercial airlines have parachutes? Well, that's exactly what we're going to see in today's video. The first major difference is altitude. A normal commercial flight you take flies at about 31,000 feet and at the speed of 600 miles per hour. And at the time of skydiving generally, planes fly at about 12,000 feet and only up to 100 miles per hour. Second difference would be number of passengers carried. Commercial planes can carry up to 850 passengers, while skydiving planes generally can go up to 25 passengers only. Other than that, at the time of skydiving, you have to carry the equipment which weighs in at about 25 pounds, which may vary according to your weight and costs roughly about six to ten thousand dollars. And skydivers generally jump in small groups of four to six people, and they jump with certain time interval between them. And you have to exert a lot of force to keep the parachute steady and maintain your direction. And last but not least, skydiving is carried in really controlled situation, and planes used for this purpose are suitable for skydiving. If you want to give parachute to every individual, that'll add about 25 pounds per person. And considering a capacity of 800 passengers, that'll add a weight of 20,000 pounds. And given the average human weight of 100 pounds, that alone will result in capacity of planes reduced by roughly 160 passengers. So this plus cost of equipment and its maintenance will reflect in increased flight tickets. And next thing is, at least once all the passengers will have to undergo 4 hours of intense training before they get a solo skydiving certificate. And if you are to evacuate 800 people in calm and orderly manner when the plane is spinning out of the control, you will have to start a commercial flight altitude itself where air is extremely thin and you will have to give everyone their own personal oxygen tank to do so, which might not be an award winning idea as the oxygen tanks are highly explosive. As you may know, plane cabins are pressurized so that we can breathe at higher altitudes. In simple terms, what this means is air from the outside is being pulled and compressed so that air you breathe in has more oxygen in it. Now, this means due to pressure difference between inside and outside, the door is being pressed with tremendous force from the inside. So if you want to open the door, you will have to apply a force equivalent to 40,000 pounds, which is like you trying to move three elephants. So by current design, as long as the cabin is pressurized, you cannot open the doors. Now let's say, despite all these obstacles, you can open the door and you have parachutes too. But now the question is, who gets to decide that it's time to jump out? Because once you open that door, you would only have 10 minutes of oxygen left and 800 people to take out. And what if only few other people want to jump out and others want to take their chances by staying inside? Because you can ask any experienced pilot and they will tell you that under any given situation, you would have better survival chances by staying inside the plane. And you're of course not going to jump out at every small turbulence. So how do you even decide that the situation is dire enough so that everyone should get out? Now, most of us might think that parachutes are not available just because airlines don't want to spend any extra money, which to a certain extent might be true, but if that was the only reason, then parachutes would have been available at least to the people who fly by first or business class, as these people are already spending thousands of dollars on plane tickets, and they wouldn't mind spending 100 extra dollars just for the peace of mind. And that added safety feature would give airlines who added a great competitive advantage over other airlines. Now, alternative to giving individual passengers their own parachute, manufacturers are working on making one giant parachute for entire plane, which will slow down the plane enough so that impact won't be catastrophic. This is already being implied in small planes with capacity up to 5 passengers. The only problem with applying this solution to commercial planes is 
due to sheer mass of commercial flights, which are around 400 times heavier than smaller capacity planes. To visualize the scale, you would require almost 21 parachutes, each of the size of a football field, to halt a Boeing 747 with 600 passengers on board. Or you would have to detach the cabin and drop the heavier components, like an engine. But again, the problem with that is, what if the dropped engine hits a city or a populated area? So in a nutshell, current planes are being designed on the ideology to keep you from breaking open the doors and even if you could, there are just too many factors that would keep you from jumping out. Rather, developing a parachute for entire plane is where manufacturers are putting their money. And hey, if you still think that it's better to carry a parachute, you can legally carry your own personal one. Okay, that concludes this video and as always, thanks for watching.